work it, make it, do it, makes us. Right, um, my name is Will May. I'm a senior consultant at Open Credo. We're a hands-on consultancy, I might say, in our booth uh, down in the hall. Um, I'm a certified Hazel Cars developer, and I'm going to give a talk on uh, moving from monoliths to microservices with the help of Hazelcast. Um, what we're going to cover is a brief look at some of the problems you can experience um, moving to microservices, um, a look at what Hazelcast actually is, um, how to use Hazelcast, and uh, finally go on to uh, what can you use Hazelcast for when um, trying to solve um, split up into microservices. So first of all, I won't go into too much detail about what's wrong with monoliths. There are many other talks out there. Um, but basically, it's easy to get into a big ball of mud when you have a, a monolith. Um, it's difficult to, it can be, all your architectural designs can uh, fall apart. Um, if you're having, if you want to scale up your monolith, um, you're not in, and you're, because your search side is being heavily used, then you also have to scale out your login side. Um, there's also the problem that when you choose your um, a language or a framework for your monolith, you're then stuck with that language or framework. Um, it's a long-term commitment. You also have the problem of state in monoliths. Not only do you have a, usually a single uh, source of your state, such a database, which then has problems when you try and uh, scale, um, but there's also, when you, if you want to split out your monolith, then you have the date that's normally stored in memory, such as a simple cache, or um, you can also have problems when you have data being streamed in, when you're trying to maintain some sort of order to that data coming in, or even the venerable HTTP session that uh, comes up with a um, whole load of problems. Um, so where does Hazelcast fit into that? Well, first, what is Hazelcast, and how does it fit into that? Well, Hazelcast is a, a distributed in-memory data grid. Um, distributed, which means uh, spread across many machines, distributed. In memory, as in not on disk. Uh, and data grid, which Wikipedia defines as services that gives users the ability to access, modify, transfer extremely large amounts of data. So this means that you can um, process that large amount, that large data you have, which can't fit into one single machine, and um, you can process that data on those other spread across a whole cluster of instances. And rather than having to drag all that data to one single place, make some modifications, and then send it back to where it came from. Uh, Hazelcast has, gives you a number of um, uh, simple uh, abstractions over this uh, data, such as you can use maps or sets or lists and things like that. Um, it also comes with native uh, JCash, JSR 107 support, um, and also it's you know, open source Apache license with enterprise support, should you so wish to use it. Getting started with um, Hazelcast is <laughs> boringly simple. Um, with Spring Boot, you just simply have to add a dependency and then configure it, and that's about it. Uh, there are, Hazelcast runs in two different ways. Um, the first mode is um, embedded, um, which means that your application that um, uh, you are running will, ho will actually host uh, Hazelcast inside of it. Um, the second method is uh, client, where you have a separate cluster entirely for Hazelcast, and then your application will then talk remotely uh, to it. Um, so here is uh, getting started in with embedded mode. We just simply add the relevant, if you're using Spring Boot, you simply add the relevant dependency at the top there, and then you can configure it down the bottom. Um, in this instance, we simply add uh, two extra nodes to it and tell it to go look at port uh, 5701, which is the default port for Hazelcast, and then another node, 5702. We also disable its default multicast lookup. You can also, there's various other ways to configure um, its lookup. I think there is a module for doing um, Hazel, uh, Kubernetes uh, lookup, for example. 
And that's what it looks like when it starts up. It finds a list of, it comes up with a list of uh, the nodes. Um, in this case, it didn't actually find the second one on 5702 because it didn't start it, it wasn't there. So it simply ignored it. Um, for clients mode, um, there isn't built-in support for Spring Boot. Um, there are, you have to do slightly more work. There is a pull request out there, which is 7469. Um, which I believe they're intending to uh, bring in on um, version 2 of Spring Boot, but it's yeah, not, not there yet. Um, so yeah, in this case, you simply add the potency, you configure it, and then you also have to create your Hazelcast instance yourself. Uh, the advantage with having using client mode over, say, embedded mode is that um, with client mode, you can actually have other languages talking to that cluster, say, Python, for example. Um, it also means that the size of your Hazelcast cluster isn't bound to the size of your application cluster. Um, you might have to store a large amount of data, so you need a large number of uh, machines to store those. But your application doesn't process at that amount of your queries. You, know, you don't have to have a small um, number of instances. So here is... Um, Yes, that's right, sorry. Um, yeah, here's it starting up in client mode. Um, in this case, yeah, there's a founder, uh, um, an instance running on um, port 5701. Um, yeah, and that's what it, what it looks like. So what things kind of that uh, Hazelcast can do to try and solve your distributed problems um, one of the problems that monoliths tend to have, especially Java monoliths, is that they love their HTTP sessions. Um, it's quite common to just simply store data in there. You know, you do a search, you store it in the in the session, so then you can later retrieve it. Um, this makes it much harder to um, having these sessions makes it much harder if you're using any sort of cluster management, um, especially something like Kubernetes or Mesos, because they prefer you to be completely stateless. Um, it, it would be kind of possible to get it done whilst using sticky sessions. So you go to that particular um, pod in your cluster, but then you have to then save your session out somewhere, um, and then you have to then try and remount that save data to another pod if that pod dies, and yeah, what happens if the request comes in the wrong point of time. Um, fortunately, uh, Hazelcast has a, a solution to this, which will attempt to quickly show you now, if I find my mouse. Um, you presentation mode. No, that's a bit better. So we have a demo application here. We have our POM file. This is just simply created from the um, uh, Spring Boot uh, getting started guide. We also have a very simple demo controller, transmit, which always returns a, a page as well. So we have, the first thing to do would be add a dependency. Thank you. Do when you aren't looking at the. Uh... And the... one second, if I look at my cheat sheet, the group is come down here. So then we go to this application and we add our new bean. Is it not? Come on, where's your? Oh, 
I don't know what I've done. I wanted to save power, so I disabled that. Right. Yes. 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 That's better. Right, so if we quickly... start up that and then go over to Chrome which is on the wall. This, sorry about this, this is actually my first um, presentation so where's that's better. Alright so if we go to the local host for T eighty we see a very simple website type in something there, it saves it on the HTTP sessions wonderful. If we then open up another start up another one on port eight eighty one, completely different instance. moment it's using its um, multicast lookup so it may take a while to start up. But as you can see it's straight up straight away and all of a sudden our, our session data is already present. Um, we can kill off the first one if you want to and the, the data is still there present. Um, anyway, back to this. Um, so what else can Hazelcast do? Um, one of the common patterns for using um, uh, when you try and spit out something into microservices is each microservice is responsible for a particular bit of data. Um, and then you, when the user makes requests, you then have to bring all that data back into a single point. Um, this may be a large number of requests, so it's quite easy to have a simple cache in Hazelcast. And this cache then expire after it's been accessed um, the last time, or by after it's first created, or it's simply um, programmatically expired. You can also, if you have a stream of events coming in, such as Internet of Things, and you want to maintain order, you can easily set up a distribute your um, events out in a consistent manner to your uh, cluster of Hazelcast instances, and then process them one at a time on those uh, instances. Uh, you can also have uh, deduplication with um, if you have a CQRS, you have commands coming in, you have some complicated commands that you want to make sure you don't process the same command twice, um, then you can easily use CQRS to try and, um, you can easily, sorry, uh, have some sort of deduplication check as the command comes in. Um, so, finally, um, it can be difficult to spit out uh, monoliths, especially when you have all the, the states shared, especially when you're talking about a UI layer. Um, but yeah, something like Hazelcast can, uh, can assist you with these sort of things. Um, with my left, any questions? Nope. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>